exciting doing stuff like this, you know? These oh, little projects like this that go together real quick. Well, hopefully they're gonna go together quick. They're just fun projects. I think they're really uh, fulfilling. Let's use that word, fulfilling or rewarding. Because you can take something that's been sitting for God only knows how many years and make it look like a car again. In order to fix that, I think what I need to do is I'm going to heat the shit out of it. How's it going, everyone? Mike with this old hot rod. It's Monday afternoon. And <clears throat> walking up back. I'm going to climb up on my ship container. Grab the old Model A frame that my 29 road... My 29 road, sir. My 29 sedan came on. All right, so we're going to start at the front. Again, this is up on my ship container. Look at a wild cherry tree above my container. These are all cherry seeds. You can see the double cross members. I don't know. I'd have to assume they ran the radiator hoses out through these, I guess. I'll fill those in. Radiator mount, I mean, uh, motor, motor mounts. So that's a 35 front cross member. It had a 35 spring ahead front axle with split wishbones. I ended up using the mounts, the wishbone mounts. They were bolt-ons. See where there's no paint there. I took them off and used them on a different frame. Both sides and you can see the 35, 35X member. And then they added two plates. This had, again, the flat head, the 21 stud with, I think it was like a 36, 37, 21 stud with a three speed. It was a running motor, transmission was good, and it had a Model A rear axle under it. I moved the axles and everything along. I don't recall when, but I did. So this is what's left. And the reason that scared, the, the reason I didn't end up using it was just some of the work that was done back in the day, getting into this hobby, not really knowing the right and the wrong, the do's and the don'ts, I thought, with there being so many frames out there, I might as well just start with a better frame. So what I've decided to do, and I think would be pretty cool for a lot of people, younger guys, kids, the older guys, whatever, people that aren't knowledgeable or people that have never done this stuff before. I'm gonna build this Roadster in my driveway. Pine Tree T Roadster build, and it's gonna be a driveway build. Everything I'm gonna do on this car, I'm gonna do in my driveway, just like they did back in the day. The only difference is I'll have some different tools, obviously, and I'll be using a MIG welder. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt, oh, there might be a bee's nest. See a bunch of bees, oh boy. Yeah, there's some bees flying around up here. You know how they say some things just have a way of working out? Check this out. I slid the T-body down onto a Model A frame that I've had for six years. I was, a little, I was a little hesitant to use it. I was new to this stuff and I wanted a frame that I could start with that was a little bit nicer. But check this out. I just slid the Model T Roadster body onto it. And part of the reason why I didn't use this frame was because of the rear kick up I thought was done a little weird. Not the way they show it on TV, let's say. It fits perfectly inside the T-body, the way that they had done it. So apparently there must have been a Model T on this chassis at some point in its lifetime. How's it going everybody? It's Mike, it's Thursday. It's the day after this hurricane blew through, but we got rain, just barely a, barely a little bit of wind. But anyways, oh, you can hear probably the wind now on my phone. I am, home early from work and I wanted to get this T body and the Model A chassis moved from the backyard up to the front yard in the little paved area driveway that I have in front of my garage. So to do that, to make my life easy, I'm gonna walk over to my brother's house, which is right next door and grab his skid steer and a set of forks. And I'm gonna move that thing to the front yard battery's at four percent so it is definitely going to die probably while i'm in the middle of doing this 
but I'm going to get it up in the driveway, put it on jack stands. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the container. And on top of the container, I have uh, one, two, three, four rear axles. There's two complete front axles. They're a little rusty. They've been sitting for a long time, but I want to see what I have. And then I have three or four other dropped axles inside my shipping container. I'm most likely going to use a dropped axle on this car. And uh, I think I already have some cut and split radius rods with the ends already put on them. I think I might have a set of wishbones. If not, I know I have a set of 34 bones. I have the ends with the bones, the mounts, the whole deal. I think it's like a speedway kit. <clears throat> I have a lot of parts that I've kind of collected over the past few years for the exact situation that I'm in right now. So I hopped in the skid steer, find a place to put my salts or water. jump up on the container afterwards and figure out what rear axle I'm going to use. I think I'll probably use my 36 rear axle. I have a set of 36 radius rods that are already cut, split with bungs in the end and tie rod ends. I'm uh, just trying to make my life easy. Get this thing to come together nice and quick. I know you guys are going to say, oh that's cheating. It is. And I agree. But if you had access to one of these, you'd be doing the same thing I'm doing. It's hard to do with one hand. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know what I'm bumping. Here we go. No, not all the way under yet. There we go. Alright, I grabbed the body. I got the windshield frames on the front of the frame, which you probably can't see. Some little set of fenders that I had. I got the deck leads in there. I think I got everything that I need for the most part. Stanchions, I think, are inside on the seat pan. So I'm gonna take this thing and run it up to the top of the house, to the top of the yard, and uh, come back and get the other pieces I need. jack stands and get this thing up on jack stands these are gonna go back to Vinny I'm gonna keep this windshield frame it's a, it's a nice frame I see it says either 1924 or 1920 on there so someone knew what it was I don't know if it's a Model T or if it's something else a Chevrolet a view I don't know So the 34 is sitting on jack stands. I have a couple of things in the big garage on jack stands. So I don't have a full set of jack stands. So I'm using a couple of big pieces of pine that my neighbor cut on his sawmill thing. All right, everyone, I want to say it's day one of the pine tree tea. Just do a little bit of hammer and dolly work on this rear panel. Uh, the reason why is because at the bottom here, where Matt meets up to the sub rail, it was kind of all wonky. I wanted to straighten it out so it would fit in order to get the bolt holes to line up, which are on this seam here. I had to get it to sit lower. In order to get it lower, I had to straighten out that lower lip. So now that the lower lip is nice and straight and even, the bolt holes line up on both sides. Not to mention there's a few bolt holes here, 
handle's a little rusted, but I'll be able to use it. It should work out just fine. I think what I'm gonna do is just take a razor blade and just scrape that gray paint off, or who knows, maybe I'll just leave. Uh, I think what I am gonna end up doing is using that, that Repop deck lid skin. Uh, the original, the one with the original green paint on it is just pretty rough, so I figure I'm just gonna make a little less work for myself and use the reproduction deck lid skin. See, I kind of got the, I couldn't do it with the machine. Uh, it was hard to get things lined up with the machine because I, I couldn't get out of it because it's got the door on it. So what I ended up doing was I got the thing closed. I ended up putting a jack underneath it with a piece of steel, lifted it up. This big like wooden block that I have it sitting on. Some of you guys might say, oh, that's not safe, but it's on the X member. So unless I'm really moving the thing around a lot, it's not going anywhere. I got the front frame horn sitting on jack stands, so I'm happy with that. It's it's stable, and it, it's only a couple feet off the ground, and truthfully, it's not really that heavy, so God forbid something were to happen, I don't think, I don't think that would be that big of a deal. So I ended up ordering patch panels for this area here. So I don't know how far forwards are gonna go, but it's, it recreates this shape here, and I think that's, that's a majority of the work, you know? Goes all the way back here to here. So I got those patch panels coming and then also patch panels for this back corner and this back corner. The rest of it, I'm just gonna make. You can see like this is not even here. So, and as, as guys know that have done this, the more you move these bodies around, the more the rust and everything kind of falls apart and things really start loosening up even more. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the rear axle. I brought two rear axles up. That's a 47 Ford truck rear axle and that's a 36 passenger car rear axle. So they both have goods and bads. The good thing about the 36 Banjo is I have a set of radius rods already that are cut and have ends put on them so to run 36 rear axle that's a bonus to have that not to mention the torque tube however the torque tubes bent in two places I pulled this out of an old junkyard paid 50 bucks for it uh, didn't come with the radius rods but I ended up finding a set so what I'm gonna end up doing and I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna cringe I have to cut the rear spring hangers off of the 36 radius rods because I, in order to run that axle, I'm gonna run a buggy spring on top of the axle, not behind it, because I do not wanna modify the frame. So the easiest way for me to do it is to do a spring over setup, which I have. I have the little spring mounts. You know what, I'm not even gonna look for them. I don't exactly know where they are. It's gonna be a waste of time. What I'm gonna end up doing is cutting the rear spring mounts off of those radius rods they've already been cut down anyway so it's not like it's a perfect set they were hot rotted at one point in time i need to get that torque tube off and i need to pull the drive shaft out i'm probably just going to see if the drive shaft company that i've dealt with in the past can salvage it um, because you can see the dent is way up at the front and then way at the rear so you can see it's way at the front and it's way, it's about a foot behind the front of the bell and about six inches in front of the, pit, the, the, the rear axle itself. So I already started loosening up the bolts. Those are coming off. So I'm hoping this whole assembly will slide out and I'll be able to get rid of that drive shaft off of there. Once that happens, I need to get a drum puller. Pete Flavin has one. Um, one of the other downfalls on this axle is this nut is good, but somebody started working on this side, I guess, to pull it apart at some time, and they mushroomed that. So what I need to do is I need to kind of clean up those threads. And I have the perfect tool for that job. I was over at my buddy Pete's house. He was, he was actually reaming the bushings for the 34. And... I was looking through his toolbox and I said, hey, what is this tool? And he said, oh, it was a thread chaser. 
it was like a, I don't know, like a die, a thread die. Well, I ended up going on eBay and I found one. So this tool is a snap on, oh, it's a Mac tool. Uh, the part number is Mac AD-10. And I don't know if you can see it, but you can see all the different thread sizes. SAE 7 8 by 14, 3 quarter 16, 3 quarter 20, 5 8 18. So this has a lot of the sizes for the threads that were used on early Ford cars. In order to fix that, I think what I need to do is I'm going to heat the shit out of it. I'm just going to, once I get the drum off, which actually, no, I don't know if the drum will even come off. I may end up having to, to, I just may end up having to grind it down and then just re-thread it, which is fine. So that's one of the other downfalls on this axle. So this axle has got some goods and bads. The good thing is I have the radius rods and I have a couple other torque tubes that I can use and put on this because this one's going to have to get cut way down anyways. The 47 rear axle is open drive. So that means if I were to mount the 36 radius rods on, if I were to mount the 36 radius rods on this rear axle, I would have to build like a additional torque, torque bar setup, which is fine, I suppose. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, so this is the torque bar mount that I built. This is going back like five years ago. I built this with just a small little bottle jack press and cardboard. And this mounts on the driver's side of a banjo rear axle, just like that. So I ended up coming up with that and building that. Now it's kind of hard to tell. So what I need to do is just get a piece of DOM tubing. So I could actually mount my 36 radius rods onto this axle, which is complete. It's a lot heavier than the 36 passenger car. The, the tubes are actually larger, um, but I think this axle is probably going to be in a lot better shape. I'm hoping those drums are good, so I'll have to pull out the cotter pins, try to get these nuts off, and see if I can get this axle apart, which is easy enough. So like I said, this, this actually will go here like that. I had this all set up on my 29 sedan, but then ended up building my own ladder bars. So... All right, well, that kind of changes my direction a little bit. Front axles, right? I don't really have much for front end stuff. This is a 34 axle and wishbone. Um, someone had started pulling it apart, didn't finish it. So I'm gonna have to try to pull this axle out, pull this axle off of these bones. I wanna run these front wishbones. I'm gonna end up cutting and splitting the wishbones. This is where the old wishbone mount was at one point. I have another set of well-done wishbone mounts that I'll end up using. I'll hopefully be able to get this axle straightened away and get this set up underneath this car. This cross member is gonna get removed. It's gonna be a pain in the you know what. I mean, look at this is just weld, real thick, heavy weld everywhere. So, look at this heavy plate that they added on both sides. Uh, flathead motor mounts are already on this frame. See the 35X member under there. Clutch pivot ball is on here already. So this frame was set up and already had a flathead three speed in it when I bought it. And that's what's gonna go back in the car. So it should all go together pretty quick. The 39 top loader here, that's, good transmission a 
goes shifts through the gears nice kind of already has a reshaped shifter i'll probably end up having to heat it and bend it a little bit more but that's a good transmission so that's the transmission i'm going to use all right everyone take my gloves off air protection so what i've been doing is i've been kind of just messing around a little bit i took off the lower pieces on the stanchions because obviously these were junk you can see some old brazing that was done there was more on the driver's side i removed those i ended up deep six in the the 47 truck rear axle it was just too wide the measurements weren't working out that's actually up here what i'm going to do with that is i'm actually going to steal the back end plates and all the brakes off of that rear axle and put them on another axle so the axle that i uh, i'm going to attempt to use at this point which is one that i had again on top of my container is a 39 rear axle this is 378 um, the only thing is this axle is seized i cannot get it to spin i'm going to try soaking the bearing tapping on it a little bit with a hammer to get it to rotate i may end up having to send this axle out and have it rebuilt or maybe one of the guys in the club can help me do it i'm not knowledgeable enough i can pull it apart but i don't know how to set lash and all that other stuff let me move because of the sun so what so again what i was saying was pulled the stanchions off i used i had to cut one bolt on each side because i just couldn't get to it on the inside so they're a little wonky they're not equal you can kind of see the driver's side ones twisted so they're all they're both going to have to be cut anyways i removed the glass from the winch the the windshield frame which are here i removed it from the stanchions that it was connected to i was thinking about maybe reusing these i know these are earlier t but so what i'm going to need to do is i need to get these cut off and then i'm going to mount what's up nate Take the machine. Uh, no, I was going to move that axle, but I just threw it up on that thing. All right, so what I'm going to end up having to do is I got to get these in because the way that they're bent out at the moment, the windshield. I just tried putting the windshield, the, the frame, those little things into these holes these stubs are too wide they won't fit in here so I am gonna end up having to run these little buckets because the threads don't stick out because it won't go in the hole so I guess what I'll have to do is I'll, I'll end up having to cut this stanchion off and end up using the top portion of this stanchion here and welding it onto here so what i need to do is i need to get the measurement from basically this hole down roughly i'm going to cut this off and then i'm going to section this and weld this into that so i'll end up cutting it and then cutting it across so then this stanchion will just slide down in and i'll weld it here and then I'll try to keep this basically the smooth transition. They're going to be a little different, obviously, because they're from a different year. But I think at the end of the day, it'll look pretty good. All right, so I'm just going to put the washers and these little cap nuts back on. So I can get a measurement of the width of the windshield frame. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of... rough measurement with my hands or rough center with my hands so I want it right on the cowl so it's going to come up a little bit I'm going to cut these long anyways and then kind of creep up so I'm just making a vertical mark on the front of the T stanchion going to make a measurement down and again i'm just going to give myself a little bit of 
little bit of extra room just to make sure I'm I'm not cutting them too short and I'm not going to leave myself with enough metal to work with. So what I need to do is I need to go up from here. So I'm going to cut it straight this way. And then it's about three quarters of an inch. I'm going to notch those out. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to cut the lower stanchions on the with that the glass is still connected to and then get it set down and then just slowly cut, make some measurements and then creep down. So the windshield's right on top of the cowl. Again, this is just gonna be a, a quick build, hot rod, race car. <laughs> show you what I mean on the body so you can see this internal piece here the way I'm hoping I can get it to work is I can hope I get the windshield to slide right down inside there and then the windshield won't move in and out with the wind so I need to remove well, actually this channel is barely even in there so I gotta get the channel up there we go I guess it's just spot welded in, I guess. I don't know. Just grab my zip cut and just cut that real quick. bending so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bend the original stanchion backwards and I will follow the back contour of it like that so it's leaned back to give the windshield a rake instead of it being straight up and down 
it'll give it a little bit of a better look. I should have cut it at an angle. I didn't really think of it, but I think I can make it up with cutting the angle on this. Just like that. I may end up having to actually go in a little bit. I think this is... All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna... I got the passenger side where I want it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to just bend that one back. Roughly the same angle. I like how it's fitting on the passenger side. Just do a real quick walk around. It's the morning now. The battery died. I was just getting ready to cut this stanchion down. So I believe I said earlier in the video, this is either a 1920 or a 1924 windshield frame. I ended up having to use these posts because the cups are larger and they fit these rotating posts on the windshield frame. It's just sitting in place at the moment but it's leaned back. Kind of see how it's got a nice look to it. It follows this contour. Probably just squeeze that down just a little bit more. Kind of clean it up a little bit, get it welded and we'll be done. So then the windshield frame will be done. Then after that, I need to get to work on figuring out the rear suspension. This is an additional 39 rear axle that I had. This thing's locked up. Probably can't see it, but the bearing is pretty well rusted. I'm gonna see if I can get that bearing freed up. Uh, I think I have another 39 axle. I know I have a couple extra sets of bells, but these are gonna get cut off. I'm gonna end up running a Model A style setup as far as the spring goes. I'm gonna get a T-spring from Vinny, so it'll sit down nice and low and have a nice ride. I have a set of 36 radius rods that I'm going to end up using. And I will end up putting a torque tube on this. So it'll be a closed drive. And then get to work on the front axle. I'm going to see if Vinny also has a Model A wishbone that I can purchase from him. I'm sure he does. I have some weld on mounts for the underside of the frame. So I'll get those all set and situated and put on. Hey, Wessie. And uh, then I can start building the front and rear axles on this thing. This is the 47 rear axle assembly. I ordered a hub puller online, so I'm hoping I can get this drum, or the drum puller, I guess I should say, not a hub puller. So I'm hoping those drums will come off. I can access these bolts once I clean it up and get these backing plates and brake assemblies off that rear axle and get them put on whatever axle I end up actually deciding to run. And then, uh, yeah, and then I can get this thing set up underneath the car, get some wheels on it. Probably just throw on a set of uh, 40 Ford steel wheels that I have with some big and littles. Those are the ones I was using for mock-up on the 34. But quick, quick little project yesterday, like I said, getting that windshield set in place. I like how it's looking so far. So that's it guys.